Our next speaker is a very special person. He is an entrepreneur and a scientist molded into one. Dr. Hans Elias Debris, a co-founder of Microflown Technologies, is an electrical engineer from the University of Trent from Netherlands. He has obtained his uh, master's degree on low noise electronics, something uh, we don't hear frequently these days. Everybody is a computer science person, a low noise electronics person. He obtained his PhD on the further scientific exploration of microflown sensor. We are with about which he is going to talk today. And he has also a postdoctoral stint on the Dutch Scientific Technology Foundation. And uh, he founded a company, Microphone Technologies, to promote this, his invention. And true to the seafaring tradition of Dutch, he has spent some time in sailing in North Atlantic. And now, in continuation of his work, he is focusing on the calibration of the microphone sensor. He, is the, he was a professor at the Department of Vehicle Acoustics at the Arnhem School of Automotive Engineering. He devotes his time on further development of his invention, microflown sensor-based applications, simultaneously teaching students about acoustic texting practices and transferring know-how to enterprises and universities on acoustics. And he's also the R&D director of Microfoam Technologies and an independent expert on aeronautics for the European Commission and consultant for the Dutch police. I don't think you need the, you can get a more, uh, colorful and wide friends expertise. We are very eager to listen to Dr. Hans Brie. Mr. Chairman, thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, thank you for being here. Two years ago I was here too, and then I presented uh, the IDs, which uh, I also got from uh, Mr. Lassivan, uh, also co-author of the paper I present here now. Uh, two years ago, we presented the IDs, and now I want to present uh, what we do with the IDs, so the ongoing research and the projects which are internationally uh, funded now. So, a small introduction. I will do my code like this. It's not as nice for the vision, but better for the sound. A uh, small introduction. Uh, this is a new sensor, an acoustic factor sensor we make with this new sensor. Uh, we tell something, the difference between the new acoustic factor sensor compared to traditional systems. We used acoustic factor sensor on different platforms. Some uh, thoughts about signal processing, application, and a small conclusion. Um, Mr. Chairman already introduced myself, so I started in 1994 with inventing it. It took 10 years to find an application, so in 10 years uh, we really sold something so we could grow the company. 2005 we had a rapid growth in automotive. And uh, I became a professor at Han University. Later on, we went uh, to the defense and security market, uh, especially by ideas from India here for the ADE. And now we are 26 FTE, so 26 uh, people full time, and 13 students work at the company. In automotive, we now an established company. So there are not ideas, but just packages with solutions. So here's an overview of what we do. Here we make our money. Uh, we sell to the these companies, and that's a small introduction. I think uh, technique is more interesting. So in acoustics, you've got sound pressure and particle velocity. Sound pressure is what you hear with your ears. Particle velocity is the other component, which uh, most people don't know about. But in usually in mathematics, you've got two quantities. Sound pressure and particle velocity, if you multiply, you get acoustic watts. If you look to the electrical domain, you've got the voltage and the amperes. If you multiply both, you've got electrical watts. If you look to energy, you have potential and kinetic energy. Again, if you multiply, you've got power. So sound pressure, you can compare, to, can compare to acoustic voltage. And particle velocity, you can compare to acoustic amperes. Sound pressure is what you hear. It's mostly a source, like me now, in the loudspeakers, with all the reflections, and then it goes to your ears. Particle velocity has got more to do with the source. So uh, source finding, that's for automotive. And what we talk here about is source localization, so the direction where sound comes from is also mostly done with particle velocity. 
what you see here is a standing wave tube, a piston that moves air, and if you move air, you get a pressure wave which is propagating. So if there's a lot of air particles, you call it high pressure. If there's less particles, you call it low pressure. And this, the blue and red together, is a sound pressure wave. Now you see exactly the same picture, but now we're following one air particle. And you can see the movement of particles is something different than the number of particles. So the number of particles is sound pressure, the movement of particle is particle velocity. Here you see a symbol of a sound pressure microphone, here you see some, a symbol of a particle velocity microphone. And if you put a loudspeaker in this direction, you get a sine wave for particle velocity, a sine wave for pressure. They are in phase, and if you sum both signals, you get a double signal. If you take a loudspeaker to the other side, then the sound pressure will continuously be the same, but the particle velocity sensor gives the opposite phase. So if you now sum the signals, you don't get any signal. So with this small experiment, you can already see we have directionality, and you can find where the source is. If the loudspeaker is here, you don't get any signal from the particle velocity probe, and it's still the same sound pressure. And the sound, if the loudspeaker is below, again, no particle velocity signal and sound pressure. So the sound pressure microphone is omnidirectional. It hears in all directions the same, and the particle velocity is directional. <coughs> How sound pressure microphones work, uh, you should know. It's the same as your ear, and most people have two. So, microphones are different. They work uh, to measure the particle velocity, and that's the flow of air. And you can see here is the scale. It's 200 microns, and 200 microns is three human hairs. So, there's here electrical connections. Electrical current goes through, and the two wires here are heated by the electrical current. And the wires are extremely thin. If now an airflow goes in this direction, this wire will cool down, the air will heat, and the second wire will cool down less. So if the air goes in this direction, there's a temperature difference in this direction. If the air goes in that direction, there's again temperature difference, but in the opposite direction. So now we have a linear device, sensitive in this direction. If the air goes in this direction, both wires will cool down, and the difference is zero. So there's no sensitivity. With three of these microphones and one sound pressure microphone, we can make an acoustic vector sensor. Here you see the sensor, here you can see the scale, it's really small. So in the middle there's a sound pressure microphone, it's a tenth of an inch, that's two millimeters. One microphone in the left-right direction, one microphone in the four-off direction, and one microphone in the up-down direction. So now we can listen in all directions and find where sound sources are. This small micro, uh, acoustic vector sensor you saw before, we can make it even smaller. It's the size of a match. We can make a chip with here the wires and through the wafer also wires. You can see it better. So this is the three-dimensional particle velocity sensor and here you can see the entrance of a sound pressure microphone. You can make acoustic vector sensors in air and that's what we do now. We can also make acoustic vector sensors underwater. Uh, this is uh, of a lower uh, uh, readiness level, but still the sensor is operational underwater, and we do this in, uh, in cooperation with Turkey. So underwater acoustic sensors, acoustic vector sensors are used for uh, detecting uh, submarines. So at really low frequency sound waves, and we find the direction so we know where the submarine is. So microphones and microphones are complementary systems. And acoustic vector sensors need measures both of these acoustic quantities, and the main advantage is that we can measure the direction of arrival directly with an acoustic vector sensor. And the direction of arrival is where the sound comes from. So with omnidirectional microphones, you cannot hear direction. So to get directionality, what you use normally is to use multiple pressure microphones and you space them. So now Here's distance between the sound pressure microphones. If a sound wave com comes in in this direction, it comes in first here, then there, then there. So there's a time difference or a phase difference. So the time of arrival difference is dependent on the direction of arrival. So with this, you can find out where sound comes from. But 
it's dependent of the speed of sound and of the frequency. So for low frequencies, you need large systems. For mid frequencies, you need also large systems, but in meters. And for high frequencies, like bullets, you need smaller systems, like 50 centimeters. So if you want to detect mortars, you need systems like this. It's not so clear, but it's 25 meters in diameter. And you need also a weather station, because the DOA is dependent on the speed of sound, and the speed of sound is dependent on the wind. So you need to know the wind direction and the velocity. So traditional systems, their, the array size is reversely proportional with frequency, which means if you ma make an uh, application for low frequencies, you need a di uh, large device. If you make an application of high frequency, you need a smaller device. But if you have the smaller device, you cannot use it for the lower frequencies. So it's also dedicated. And acoustic vector sensors don't have these frequency issues. It's always small. The, the direction of arrival is a direct output of the sensor. And we don't have this wind and temperature effect. So there are two, times, two types of noise sources, impulses and time-varying noise sources, or non-impulses. So for instance, a low frequency can be a mortar, mid-frequency can be a subsonic gun, and a an, uh, high frequency can be a supersonic gun, if the bullet makes a really high, sharp tone. Low frequency can be a helicopter, low frequency can be also a propeller uh, aircraft, a ground vehicle is a um, little bit higher, and broadband can be a jet or a rocket or a RPG. Um, you can buy already systems in the marketplace that exist for uh, something like 10 or 20 years to find mortars. And here you can see the system. It's a large system. So this system can only find mortars. Gunship localization systems like this are uh, frequently used now, but these things can only find gunshots and no mortars. There is a system uh, made that can uh, detect acoustics uh, of helicopters. So this system is designed for detecting helicopters, and again, it cannot do mortars, and it can do the, cannot do gunshots. So every system is dedicated. So what we found out now, with our acoustic vector sensors, we can do all. So this is just a statement. And here, uh, the last two years we spent with testing, uh, already in 2006, here in India, yeah, the helicopter was tested. Uh, by that ID, we, we get into this uh, battlefield acoustics market, and we went to the Dutch Army. We did gunshot localization. Uh, this is supersonic, subsonic. Uh, there's a huge interest for UAVs, because what you hear here is the UAVs is really nice for observing, but UAVs can also be used for ter terrorist attacks. And terrorist attacks, yeah, you can carry a little bomb, you fly in a city, and what uh, we found out is you cannot, you cannot do anything about it. A UAV cannot be detected by radar, not by uh, vision, not by laser. So you can fly in, drop a bomb, and there's nothing to do. So with acoustics, we can find these uh, UAVs. There's a huge interest in Holland for that. Um, we uh, measured uh, rockets, uh, large armor, jets, and in Holland there's a special program now for mortars. The mortars is detected again by radar but radar can, can be failed and can be jammed. So we need acoustic means to find uh, the mortar. And also, uh, little aircraft uh, for border control, little aircraft can fly on a low altitude where radar is not used, so you can fly in and out of the country, whatever you like, you cannot be detected. But with acoustics, it can. So in this applications, the acoustic vector sensor is used as an acoustic radar. And it's not better than a radar, it's complementary to a radar. A radar can f see high and far, and we can see low altitude and closer by, so a few kilometers of range. So, this is an even more complex uh, graph. So I go into the sensor platforms, and we look at uh, the, the various sound sources. So, on the ground, we have uh, programs in Holland now with the Dutch uh, MOD. Uh, especially for mortar, subsonic guns and supersonic guns, uh, they're really interested uh, to make acoustic systems to find where people shoot from and uh, where they, uh, uh, these, these explosions occur, occur. Also for training, 
So you shoot a mortar and you want to know where it is, and you know if you shot it right. So for training exercises, it's also important. Uh, so situation awareness is the, the buzzword there, remote weapon stations. And if you look to this one, it's the UAV and the micro air vehicle for automatic takeoff and landing. And terrorists, we are really interested from the ground to detect these things. I put this in red because this is the main topic of the talk here. On the person, mostly you want to find supersonic guns. So if you are under attack, you can find where the shooter is. You can hide before or after uh, the gunshot and uh, you find where it is so you can hide on the proper way. On the ground vehicle, um, it's a rec reconnaissance vehicle. Strangely enough, everybody is only watching and nobody is listening. While humans always listen and then watch. Yeah, if you, you hear something special, you watch what, what is happening. But in the army, everybody is deaf. Because you have hearing protections, you're inside the vehicle, so nobody can hear. The only thing you have is a camera. So if you have reconnaissance, it's much nicer to find out where sound is and then steer the camera instead of only look if you see something. Uh, if, if there's an explosion, you, you don't hear. Most of the time you don't see it. So that's the reconnaissance. Another thing is helicopters are really difficult to detect by radar. Uh, they fly low. So this uh, uh, vehicle, it's, uh, it's used in the Dutch Army. It cannot detect helicopters and it will be attacked by helicopters. So now we place an acoustic factor sensor on the system. We cannot use radar here because radar will give away the location. So by listening where the helicopter is, uh, they can look with the camera system and the camera system has rockets on it so it can shoot back. Here again in red, because this is uh, the topic uh, of the speak, uh, UAVs. Um, what the, the, the project which we do with the ADE is find out low frequency noise impulses and mid frequency noise impulses. So if somebody's shooting below, we can find where it is from the UAV. Uh, other topics which we talk about is sense and avoid. So uh, these air vehicles are in the, in the air. If they co when they collide into other air, air vehicles, it's not so nice. Uh, you're flying your own aircraft. You don't want a UAV flying into you. So the UAV should sense the other uh, vehicles and avoid them. We can do that. And also landing uh, the, the vehicles, the smaller vehicles you can land by just glide. With the bigger, bigger vehicles, you want to home in. And again, radar is not so suitable for this because uh, at close range, radar doesn't work. And this acoustic factor sensor at close range, we can land planes with it. For helicopters, there's a uh, request for safety. They fly low, so they can be shot by normal guns. And you want to know, if you're under fire, where to, f where to go to. If the shooter, shooter is there, you go there instead of going closer to the shooter. So you want to have gunshot localization on the air, on the helicopter. Again, uh, small aircraft are used for reconnaissance. So you want to know what's, what's happening. And also these small aircraft, maybe not these ones, but you have slow flying aircraft. They're really good for reconnaissance. You look on a border, but you can be under fire and you want to flee them. Rockets. You can have uh, a target guidance. If you have an uh, anti-tank uh, missile, the last uh, 100 meters, you can home in on the noise of the tank. Uh, boys, we have a, a program uh, together with Turkey on boys. Uh, with, uh, with boys, you can find ships, so you know if people entering your uh, waters. You can detect, for instance, cruise mi missiles. Cruise missiles fly really low, so they cannot be detected by radar. And easily detected by boys. And uh, this boy has an uh, acoustic factor sensor in air, but also an acoustic factor sensor underwater, so they detect uh, anti-submarines. So the boys can really be good for border control in the water. And ships, here you see, it's an Indian ship. Our sensor is also tested here. Uh, there are two main things. Um, you can find helicopters, and helicopters can land on ships. But ships move. It is really difficult. And with our uh, automatic takeoff and landing system, you are able to home in on the ship and find the ship movement. So it's an uh, assist for helicopter landings. 
Another thing which is uh, dangerous for ships is little ships. Go fast or rips, they can enter ships and because the radar is ma mainly to find uh, ships, large ships far away, but the small ships close by cannot be detected by radar and now with acoustic factor sensor you can do this. So these are all the applications and they are sponsored by uh, quite some uh, countries, so we're really busy. Here's you again an overview of all the, the places where we put the sensors and tested them. So here's a test to get more insight uh, what we are doing. Uh, here's a vehicle, here's an acoustic factor sensor, here's our measurement, measurement uh, location, it's a van in idling, so it makes diesel noise. Behind here there's gunshots and there's a plane flying over here. So the direct output of the acoustic factor sensor you can see here, it's time, frequency and direction of arrival representation. So the colors mean the direction where the sound comes from. Green means it comes from the southwest, purple means it comes from the northeast. So what we see here are vertical spikes and these are the gunshots at about one kilometer. And you can see all the spikes are green, so they come from the southwest. The gunshots are easily removed in time domain. So then you end up with the same picture with the gunshots removed and now you get only tonal noise sources. So the impulses are removed and you, get, you end up with tonal noise sources. So here you can see two vertical lines, which means there's no direction change, eh? it, it's constant from the southwest. So it means it's a stationary source, it's not moving, and we can reduce these stationary noise sources. And that's in this case the van. So when we remove these sources, we end up with only the varying sources. Eh? Every source that is uh, moving uh, uh, relative to you has a Doppler shift. So here you see the Doppler shift and also the color change. It's, it's coming from southeast to northeast. And this is the, the plane coming over. And if you have this data, you can calculate everything from the aircraft. So we can actually exactly uh, calculate its height, its heading, its speed, and the true RPM. So we can classify the plane. So all this is done real time. It's a direct output of the sensor, it's no processing, we can do it also from a UAV. So, in cooperation, we do impulse detection from a micro-air vehicle. And other topics we are already thinking about is sense and avoid and automatic takeoff and landing. It's a nice word, but automatic takeoff is easy. So, that's why it's the landing that's what we are focusing on, because takeoff, it's... Uh, a done deal. So when we got uh, the telephone call that we should cooperate on these uh, micro air vehicles, we directly started. And the first thing we tested was in the lab, we had our own air vehicle, we put our sensors on, we put the prop propulsion on, we did not fly it, and at a few meters away, something like 20 meters away, we put another aircraft on, just on the ground, to see if we can handle the syst these, these systems, of these signals. So here again, you can see the time signal, the frequency bands, and all the horizontal lines are the propeller of the own vehicle. And our question was, can we detect a other propeller whilst we have our own propeller on? So what you can see here, we can eliminate our own noise of the own vehicle and then still find the other uh, air vehicle that switched on and switched off. So this was a first test to prove that we can do sense and avoid. It's not a real test, but it's a proof of concept, so this encourages to, to go on. So the second uh, thing we did, we were inside a car and we put the micro air, air vehicle in our hand. Now we simulate wind, vibration, and we can do it with and without propeller. And we don't have the hassle of flying, so that was too difficult. So this is the second test, and what you can see here, is again Doppler shifts because in the car we honked it and if you drive by a honking car you get the Doppler shift. And here again you see the direction. So the, without propeller you can see nicely that we uh, passing 
discard, we discard with the micro air vehicle in our hands. And even if we put the, the, oh yeah, the nice thing is, you have no noise problems of wind. With the noise uh, uh, reduction, uh, with, a, with the wind cap was uh, nicely done, we had proper signals. And if we put the, the propeller on of the micro air vehicle, you see signals, but still the Doppler shift is seen, so we know we can detect some other sources when the platform makes noise itself. This encourages to uh, continue. Uh, we work with the Dutch military uh, on this one. We have our own uh, toy planes. Uh, we can, uh, they are just 100 euros. We put our sensors on, we fly it uh, a little bit, and then we break it, and we buy a new one. Uh, this is done together with Delft, a quad rotor. So there's a huge amount of noise uh, of the platform. Even then we can uh, detect something. This is our uh, toy plane, our acoustic factor sensor, a data, data recorder, and here you can see we fly it. And here are the signals. Again, time, frequency. So here the propeller is off. You can hear claps. So here's somebody uh, with two wooden sticks making impulse noises. Where the, the plane is here. So here it's on the ground still. It's not flying. The propeller is off. You hear claps, claps. Now the propeller is on makes a huge amount of noise, so you cannot see any claps. Then it's flying. You can see here there's some wind noise, and the claps continue, and here it's landing, uh, making noise of the impact. So we made an algorithm. Here you can see propeller noise. It's completely uh, blocking uh, the claps, but if we have uh, some uh, processing, we can reduce the propeller noise because it's predictable, and we end up with proper signal of the claps. Here you can see uh, this, uh, the result in the XY plane. Here the result in the YZ plane. So it's a three-dimensional representation. The black circles, it's really difficult to see. The black circles are the true location. The red circles are the unprocessed uh, prediction where it is. You can see it's completely wrong. But if you process it to reduce the helico of the, the propeller noise, we get a fairly good estimate here with the green circles so we can estimate where the, the, the claps were uh, by, by showing that's pretty close to the uh, black circles. So we have ongoing research here in India. Uh, the sensors are two at the ADE. Here is tested with a man plane so it goes much faster. Uh, this I thought something like 70 knots or 70 meters per second, I, I don't for sure, but it's really hi, uh, high velocity and still then we got signals out. Uh, there's a lot of uh, improvements possible now and uh, I think with the joint cooperation I'm 99% I'm, well, sure because 100% uh, <laughs> it's not research anymore, but 99% sure we can have this uh, acoustic uh, factor sensor on the platform. So now uh, the other topics, we can do automatic Takeoff and landing. Well, the A toe, we are not interested in. We are only inter interested in the L, the landing. Uh, the most simple way is taking two ground sensors, and the ground sensors, they point where, this, uh, where the, the micro air vehicle makes noise, and you can find where it is. And this is a measurement of a true helicopter, so it makes much more noise, and, but you can see the range at uh, 200 meters, 100 meters, f uh, something like 25 meters high. We could land. Or we we could track where a helicopter was, and we could compare this with the uh, GPS data of the of the platform. So we knew that we can locate the platform, and we can do this almost real time. So I think we are really able to land an aircraft with the system. So these are with two sensors on the ground. There are also other uh, possibilities which I will not discuss now. Uh, we have papers on this, so if you're interested, you can mail me and. We can discuss this later. So, in general, uh, an acoustic factor sensors can be used for all sound signatures and can be used on all platforms. And I missed here one of the other general remarks. Uh, an acoustic factor sensor can be seen as an acoustic radar, where a true radar is uh, really good in far and high, and we are really good in uh, lower uh, altitudes and closer range. So it's a complementary system to the radar. And in relation to the micro air vehicle, we can we prove that we can do impulse detection from the ground. 
uh, a thing that we not really discussed here, but these small cameras on the micro air vehicles, it's really nice when you see it. And if you look at the pictures, it's always nice. But if somebody is shooting, you will never find it. Yeah, because it's, it's, it's a nice quality, but it's not really high definition quality what comes out. So what you can do is guide the camera to impulses or tonal noises. So we can uh, use uh, the, the uh, acoustic factor sensor for cueing cameras on the MIV. It really, really increases the functionality of the MIV. We can use it for sense and avoid, so we will not hit other aircraft. And we can do the L of ATOL, automatic take of landing. And that was the, the conclusion. Questions? I would like to ask you a question on, uh, you know, we are planning to buy avian radars. These radars are going to be deployed in the airfield mm -hmm. so as to detect flying birds. Can your sensor be used for detecting small birds or even large sized birds within uh, airfield space? Uh. We got a request uh, recently from somebody, I think in Hong Kong, maybe it's the same request. Uh, what we can do, we can not use passive manners because the birds may not make noise. But you can emit sound and if you do an impulse of let's say one kilohertz, the wavelength of the one kilohertz is 30 centimeters. So if there's a group of birds with a size more than 30 centimeters, they will reflect. And because uh, the, air, uh, the ground sensors are in a fixed location, your loudspeakers are in a fixed location, you really understand the situation. So when you get reflections where you don't expect them, you can assume it's birds, and then you cue a camera on it. And so every time what we found out is acoustics is really nice for detecting, but for classification, it's nice to have a camera too. Because that's a human way of working. So. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, does this consider the effects of echo? Uh, sorry, yeah. Does this consider the effects of echo? Echo, echo. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so echo, uh, again, you have to split uh, the situation for impulses or for tonal noise sources. For impulses, it's not so difficult because we have a real-time uh, direction of arrival estimate. So what we do, we detect an impulse, and at the, the, the signal of the impulse, we know directly where the sound comes from. So if you have a high energy in one direction, and you get a direction, once the direction starts to deviate, it becomes, this is due to echoes. So that's one way, of what we can do, until we don't see deviation of the direction of arrival, we say this is a signal, once it starts to deviate, we call it an echo, and we don't analyze. So the more echoes you get, the less accurate you are, but still you can, can do it. And there's another way of uh, reducing echoes. Um, that's a little bit hard to explain in one sentence, but you can imagine you have got four signals, at three times particle velocity and one time sound pressure. So you can find two sound sources at the same time. And because you do everything real time, uh, real time means uh, it doesn't take time to calculate the direction of arrival, you find first the source, and the second source is an echo, you can find too with the system. So even if there's a reflection, you can find out where the reflection comes from and handle it. And then when multiple reflections come in, then stop the anal analysis. So that's for impulses and for uh, reflections. Uh, it's much harder to find uh, 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 reflections with tonal noise sources yeah, because it's continuous wave. But sometimes we use the reflections. For instance, if you have, a, uh, again, a micro-air vehicle, it makes noise. We know where the noise comes from from the vehicle, so we can calculate it to zero. And then we listen to the reflections. If there's no reflection, it's in the air. When it comes to the ground, we hear the reflections and we can detect it. So the question was really broad, how to handle uh, reflections. Sometimes they even help you. Sir, so I wanted to ask, like, how does the bad weather...
15 minutes. Thank you, sir. Uh, at Friends, we had an excellent talk by Dr. Hans Debris on the acoustic rectus sensor. And uh, he explained the principles, the possible applications, and what future holds. I think that is the most exciting thing, using sensor and avoid and uh, automatic takeoff and landing. I think it is an exciting thing. We would like to be interacting with him on these new areas. Thanks a lot, Doctor.